And right there is the bucket. You can see the wood inside the bucket. That is definitely a bucket standing up. I think I finally did it. I finally found a bucket standing up full of gravel. And it turns out there's three buckets stacked. Those buckets are covering up good diamond ore. And there's proof. I think I found a beautiful, flawless, yellow, resorbed Arkansas diamond from the crater of Diamond State Park. And see if the diamond will keep glowing. Oh my gosh. I'm in the South Trench at the Crater Diamonds, and I have been down here probing for the last year and a half, ever since they dug this out. And today I think I have finally found the gravel I've been looking for. Let's take a closer look and I'll let you hear the sound of the crunch that we can get an idea what the gravel sounds like when it hits the end of the probe. There's a layer above a really crunchy layer and the crunchy layer is what I'm probably gonna find my diamonds in so that's what I'm gonna try to get to. The gravel down here is like minimum one foot down to three or four feet it starts the gravel layers so you can come down here anywhere from two feet and four feet is gravel and so on and so on it can keep going and going in some spots over here you can see where i've outlined my hole right there i did several probes going east and west and that's where the this gravel layer seems to be running is east and west not north and south always a really good indicator for heavier minerals to be trapped versus north and south. I probed over here and it just seemed to disappear, but it's definitely going east and west. Here's that little, there's the first layer, and there's the crunch. You hear that? Let's come over here because we know the gravel changes every two to three feet. It could be good here and bad stuff over here or even better stuff over here. Oh man. Let me come back a little bit. We got big rocks and little rocks, that's good. There's the crunch of the little stuff. Right, it's time to dig out this gravel. That's all fluff right there. Get this through a lot of rust color. We're gonna get into some uh, artifacts maybe from the old mining companies or maybe from the early diggers when it became a state park in the 70s. digging my hole and the mud sticks to the shovel so bad you gotta have something to bang your shovel on like a big rock or your uh, four by four that I use called the slat board so I went to look for a big rock because I didn't really want to walk up to my cage and get my uh, slat board and I found this big rock this rock is agate that's the biggest piece of agate I have ever found this is insane. I was gonna use this for my shovel, but I'm gonna put that in the rock collection. Check that out. Let's take a closer look at it with the better camera. Crazy, huge piece of agate. I can't believe this huge piece of agate turned out to look like this after getting it cleaned. This piece of agate has got to be around 40 pounds and I even saw like some druzy in spots crystallization forming a little bit of crystallization right in there
I've been down here digging away and check out this artifact. Check that out. Y'all see that? It's a well-preserved railroad spike. The way this clay is right here, it keeps everything preserved. But when you get to the crater of diamonds, and you see that big ore wagon out there in the front of the visitor center. That big wagon came from down here somewhere. One of the old diggers, his name is uh, Bobby. Bobby found it because Bobby dug some big holes. Now that is really cool. Huh, never thought I'd find that at the diamond mine. I'm gonna give this railroad spike away to one lucky subscriber that leaves a comment. Man, that's cool. Let's get this video up to 3,000 likes. Any other artifacts I find, I'll also give them away. We'll have several winners. Might even throw some unsearched heavy minerals from the crater of Diamond State Park. Well, I'm digging down and looks like I may have found pieces of an old bucket. So there's definitely a miner here from the uh, early days since, since it's become a state park. Found a railroad tie, a railroad spike, a bucket. And there are buckets buried under here with really good diamond ore already in them. There's been regulars out here digging a hole and they fill up their buckets and it would be on the day where they're filling in holes with the dozer. So they had to get out of their hole. Some of the miners would fill their buckets up with that good ore, throw a sheet of plywood over the buckets, and then let the uh, dozer fill it in because they didn't have time to get their buckets out. It'd be cool to find some buckets full of gravel. It's like a stick. There's a big stick, piece of a log. Oh, look at here. Looks like we have a uh, water bottle. Uh, huh. With water in it. Good, I'm getting thirsty. Well, I'm in the gravel, guys. That's what those guys would do. They throw their trash down here on this gravel. I mean, I'm seeing a little bit of gravel, but not like. I think I still need to go down about another foot to get that really good crunch. I want to see where the gravel's at. Yep, about a half a foot there. A couple feet there. Really wavy. See, it's even almost two and a half feet over on that side. Ooh, it's right there over here. Nice little strip of crunch. Hear that? Start getting the gravel in the buckets. Ooh, I see some red jasper too. Check that out. All right, red jasper. Exactly the indicator we want to see on these larger pieces of jasper if we got the red big we should have them small if the gravel is small I see a lot of small gravel like I say the good stuff's about another foot to two foot down hopefully it's gonna be loaded with red jasper those layers that are another foot half a foot down all right I think I've hit a layer of gravel I may start collecting Take a, listen to it start bucketing all this up Need more of that bucket huh this bucket right here <laughs> I think I found a bucket guys this bucket is 
if it's a full bucket it's actually standing up i may have actually found a spot where there's buckets filled with gravel i don't know there's a bucket over here crazy it's a full bucket just sitting upright and they may have tossed this in here to but if you're gonna throw your buckets in to help fill in your hole you'd flip it upside down not upright where the material can go in it I don't know if you can see that A lot of wood roots that bucket has been there for probably 15 years oh, there's gravel above the bucket okay maybe the bucket collapsed See the gravel, but there's gravel in it, and pieces of a bucket. <laughs> and right there's the bucket. You see the wood inside the bucket. That is definitely a bucket standing up. And there could be more buckets that way. There could be several buckets standing up, full of gravel. I have three, four buckets filled. And that bucket standing up is full of gravel. I think I finally did it. I finally found a bucket standing up full of gravel at the Crater of Diamond State Park. All right, here it goes. I'm gonna just stab into that. I can feel gravel with my fingers, but let's see if it's full. I don't know. May not, it looks like it's full of wood. That thing's just full of wood, that bucket. With gravel. There's gravel in there, so I gotta get it. Plywood. filling up the Lowe's buckets and found another bucket standing up right beside that other one. So these buckets were definitely filled with ore and material. Now I'm gonna work on piercing into that one and it could be with better material versus that one. That one's full of wood. This one may be full of gravel and diamonds. Man, that is so crazy. Another bucket that could be full of gravel. These buckets are just like full of wood. That is very weird. They're not full of gravel, full of wood. Anyways, they may be some uh, dummy buckets.
15. I'm gonna try to get 18 bucks and call it a day. Let's take a look at the buckets now. I can see the bottom of the buckets. Yeah, they're just full of wood. And underneath those buckets, I found some amazing gravel. So sometimes the buckets are covering the good gravel. Aha! Can't fool me. Well, this gravel keeps going and going. I need to get my other shovel because I'm having a hard time reaching it. This, this fork is helping a lot. So two more will be 18 buckets. Look at this huge rock. Not thinning out over here though. Yeah, I think these buckets are marking a hole. They got the good material underneath the buckets. Because there's just wood and clay in those buckets. That tells me that the good ore is underneath the buckets. And I grabbed the short shovel. Alright. I'm starting to fill it in my shoulders get these last two and I'm out of here start filling in the hole Now that's the sound I like to hear piercing in the gravel. This is definitely what I call Captain Crunch gravel. Getting down there, I'm gonna try to get two more buckets. That'll be 18 total. I do like that number 18. And it turns out there's three buckets stacked. And there could be another bucket behind those and another bucket behind those covering up good diamond ore that's just waiting to be scooped up like I just got. And this stuff down here is amazing. Have to use my hand scooper. The shovel's just getting harder and harder to use. Because that's getting deeper and deeper. Turns out, I wasn't able to even fit down in the hole. And my leg got a really bad cramp.
filling in the hole. Then I'll start carrying buckets to my cage. Come out here tomorrow and get 18 buckets washed. Washing buckets from the hole, two buckets. Here's the second bucket caught classifier. Tons of gravel. Lots of red jasper. And this stuff is just loaded. And check out this agate. It's you know, getting really hot. It's a very unique gravel than what I'm used to seeing. Don't really see this very often. Loaded with red jasper. All in there. So far, every bucket has looked like that. Bucket number three. Check out all the gravel. And right there, nice heart stopper. Piece of quartz. This bucket was loaded. Look at that jasper. And also, I noticed a heart-shaped rock somewhere. Oh, here it is. Somewhat a heart. This way, that's a heart. Here's the bottom classifier. And look at the difference from what you worked versus this. Nothing but rocks. Oh, this is about bucket number nine. Starting to see agate. This layer is a little different than what we washed the last bucket. The last bucket was from the bottom of the hole. This is now making our way up towards the middle of the gravel layer. And I'm starting to see more indicators that I like. The agate. Tons of red jasper in here. Look at all that red jasper. And right here, we have some conglomerate. And it's the type that's really small and compact. Type is a lot older than the conglomerate where it's just the bigger rocks like this fused together. This is the stuff you wanna see. This is a lot heavier and dense. Lots of agate. And I'll be uh, bagging all of this up as well. Ooh, what's that? Oh, Jasper. So I'll be uh, bagging a lot of this up and I'll be putting it on my eBay. So if you'd like to get a bag of all this right here, it'll be large rock and all this. Be looking out for my eBay store. Grab you a bag of Jasper, agate. I believe it's bucket 12. Gravel still showing up really good. And look at that. Oh man, piece of quartz. That's a good indicator. This is a large quartz. It's always good to see. And as you can see, the gravel is not letting up yet. But these last buckets will get less and less gravel. It was towards the top of the hole, a bunch of clay. I did start to see some lamprite, so that's good. Oh, this one's weird. Check that one out. Looks like a J or an L or a foot. And also, I noticed that. Oh, man. Another heart stopper. That's going to be a piece of Jasper that's been washed. Oh. Dang, mm. that would have been a about a three carat, two and a half, and yeah, maybe three carat if it was a diamond. 
Okay, bucket 13. And a really pretty piece of agate popped up. Check out that agate. Got some good detail. Maybe our diamonds will have some good detail since it's not burned up. Check out all the gravel in that bucket. Loaded. Just loaded with red jaspers. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at this. Just what we want to see. Working on getting all this material centered up, pick out the diamonds on the top using the gemstone concentrator. That's what that's called. It's not called a Saruka, it's not called a Saruki or Saruki Dookie. It's called a gemstone concentrator. India started using this method hundreds and hundreds of years ago, finding rubies. They understood that the rubies would go to the bottom, and when they flipped the material, the rubies would be on top just as the same as the diamonds do since all this material is really light compared to the diamonds and the garnets and the barite all that will center up and when you bounce it all the heavies will be at the bottom and when you flip it over you can pick everything out on the top and this material right here this is not from the hole this was off the table at the south wash even at the North Wash, you can get there early and people that don't know what they're doing is working material all day and not taking their centers home. This material could have a diamond and all I had to do was scrape it off the table. Here's the first center that I made and I can't believe that it actually has a pretty decent center. There's some good heavies in there. They did not take the centers. We can see a diamond just in this material alone. You can see the difference from the field that definitely came from the east drain or the west drain versus the material from my hole. You can see there's just so much more gravel when you're working the gravel layers. That's why we dig down deep. That's why we break our back because people have found 50 plus diamonds out of their hole in the past. My best is four diamonds out of 12 buckets. That's why we dig holes. Don't get me wrong. There's been some big, amazing, beautiful diamonds right off the surface. I've already made the centers from one of the buckets and here's the second bucket. And it's showing some really good signs of heavy minerals. And this one is also showing some pretty decent amount of heavy minerals. I know when I take my centers, I don't leave that much material behind. You definitely better not be because you'll be leaving diamonds behind. And here is the last of the material that was just sitting on the table at the wash station. Not bad, you can see the difference from that versus digging a hole. Sometimes when we dig a hole, it looks kind of like this. But you can see over here, this gravel vein that I found is just loaded with gravel. <laughs> Been working on the material from the hole down to just a little bit in the first bucket. And we have all that to do. It's probably three or four flips. Yeah, I'd say I got a couple minerals out of that hole. Right here is the bullseye. Most of the diamonds will be out here on the edge. So you really want to look out here. Those are the first four flips. 
see that the bullseye is getting a little darker, which means we've got a few more heavy minerals. A lot of magnetite, looks like hematite, spinel. We could definitely see a diamond. I'm gonna have to go back and get some more of this to get the diamond. I could have one. I have to let these dry and go back over them. Once everything dries, you can really tell because right now everything's shiny. That's either spinel or a huge piece of hematite. Man, this stuff is awesome. Whew, look at all that gravel. And I didn't even put a dent. There's so much more gravel to get down there. Crazy. I ran out of juice. Right here on the second flip, right there, almost dead center, guys. Okay, I wanna let you all take a look at it and see if you can see the diamond. Yep, right there. Oh, it's a beautiful diamond too. Man, that thing is yellow. It's not a canary yellow, but it looks like it could definitely be a yellow diamond. All right, I feel like I hit some really good stuff. Those buckets are covering up good diamond ore. And there's proof, a nice little diamond. That thing is clean too, it might be a flawless diamond. All right, I gotta check all these others. Plus, get the rest of the material centered up. We could have another diamond. All right, my 44th diamond. Let's get the spoon and scoop it out. Looks like it's gonna be about a 10 point. Turns out this diamond is also right up here by a beautiful garnet. I thought that might be a diamond and it could be. No, nope, it's a garnet. But that right there is a diamond. Beautiful diamond. That's a yellow diamond. Yes. And the yellow diamonds are more valuable. The canary yellows are really valuable. But they are so rare. It's really hard to get those. You can ask any regular miner. You just don't see them very often. Definitely want to use a spoon to get your diamond. Like I've said, it's time to scoop that beautiful yellow diamond up. Oh my gosh, see how it buries really hard even with the spoon. All right, I got it in the spoon. There it is. Right there, that is a yellow diamond. Appears to be flawless. Oh my gosh. I think I found a beautiful flawless yellow resorbed arkansas diamond from the greater diamond state park may 2021 on the 14th which is a friday yes friday diamond that is so awesome okay i could have more i gotta i gotta get back to it what am i doing there's the diamond yellow Beautiful facets. Thing is so beautiful. It's a flawless yellow diamond. I don't see any flaws yet. I still need to look at it a little better. Let's check to see if it's gonna fluorescent under the UV light. There's the yellow diamond. I'm gonna take the diamond and set it on this phone case. All right, let's turn these lights off. And there it is. It turned out to be blue. That's the most common color for diamonds to glow is a blue color. I've had them orange, red, green. Unbelievable to see these diamonds fluorescent. And 65% of the diamonds that were tested 
by the GIA did not fluorescent. So most of the diamonds in the world will not fluorescent. But here at the Crater Diamond State Park, it is starting to appear that most of these diamonds will fluorescent. I have tested hundreds of Arkansas diamonds and more than half will fluorescent. So that tells me that there is a higher percentage of diamonds that will fluorescent at the Crater Diamond State Park. And to me, that makes them more valuable because it's even rarer. That's so cool. Let's see if it'll stay glowing when I turn the UV light off. I've had it charging now for quite a bit. Let's go ahead and turn it off and see if it's going to glow. Oh my gosh, it did. Yes, that is so cool. It's still going. Still glowing. There, it faded away. It doesn't glow as long as the Tater Island Diamond. That will glow over 40 seconds before fading. Another diamond that glows. Round number two. Round number one, we got a nice yellow diamond. It's not flawless, but it's not an ugly diamond at all. It's definitely a gem quality diamond. There's just a few flaws in that diamond. And here's all the heavy minerals still looking good. This one here is loaded with spinel. That's the black shiny rocks. Right there, right there, right there, right there. They're just loaded with those. That's a really good indicator. So this is where those yellow diamonds like to hide. And here are the other two. Here's the last one. Really good looking centers right here. Man, look at all those heavies. Lots of spinel. There might be a diamond right there. Very pleased with this gravel layer. I'd like to go back and get some more of it. Round number three. We got three flips and I didn't see any diamonds yet. Everything's still wet. I do like to look as soon as I make the flip, but just like that diamond earlier, I didn't see it on the center right away. I had to come back when I came back to it while everything was dried. Then I noticed the diamond just because everything's so shiny. It makes it really hard to uh, spot the diamond right away. Best to let it dry good and then go back over your centers. Here's the last one. That's the bottom of the bucket right there and it's uh, loaded. Hematite, magnetite, tons of spinel right in there. Yeah, let this dry good and I'll scan it. My Patreons will definitely enjoy this heavy mineral in their monthly goodie bag. And some of this will go on eBay as well. But that's it. I've done my searching. Is that right there? I look at it. I pick out the 10 points and up. And all the smaller diamonds, we normally find them going over all the material on the tray or a pizza pan. That's how we get the one points, the two points, all the way up to probably an eight point. Those diamonds just don't normally expose themselves. They're so small. It's really easy to miss them. So all this material goes to my eBay and my Patreon supporters. I was draining the water before I make the flip. Right here is a piece of agate. Right there. So that tells you that agate is not a heavy indicator. This is a clean piece of agate. It's not burnt up. Maybe that's why the diamond's not chewed up and rough looking because the agate that I found in my top screen was amazing 
really beautiful pieces. None of it was burnt up to nothing, and that really matters on your diamonds because if you're, to me, if your agate's clean and pretty, so are your diamonds. But this right here, I just wanted to show everybody and let y'all know that agate is not a considered a heavy mineral. We look for agate because it's one of the minerals that we like to see to find diamonds. And by the quality of the agate could determine the quality of your diamonds that you'll be finding. So I like to look for good, clean agate, not the burn up, nasty looking stuff. And here's my 44th diamond registered. Turned out to be a yellow. Not bad for 19 buckets. And here it is under the microscope. All their high tech equipment. There's the scale. A little chewed up on the upper corner. Now we are checking out the diamond under my digital microscope. This microscope is amazing. You can get them off eBay. I'll have a link in the description below. You can get your own digital microscope and check out your diamonds and gemstones. When I push the diamond over the line, you can see the line through the diamond. This is a test that the Crater of Diamonds performs that'll tell you if it's a diamond or not. But right here, it's showing that the line can be seen through the diamond. Normally, they would tell you it's a piece of quartz if you're able to see the line. And if you're not able to see the line, it's a diamond. But this facet is so large and this diamond is so clean internally that you can see the black line through this diamond and many other diamonds as well. So to me, that test isn't a very accurate test. The Crater Diamonds no longer will print a picture of your diamond. When you find your diamond, they will no longer give you a printout. These three right here is what they emailed me. And when I printed them out, that's what it turned out to be. And that's not what it's supposed to look like. There's my yellow diamond. We just seen it on the video, and that's the exact same printout. Here's what the Crater Diamonds printouts look like when they would print your diamond out that you find. These are all my diamonds in order. There's my half carat, 53 point, snake pit, five buckets. My yellow diamond from the East Drain. They no longer print these out. It's gonna be really hard for me to keep track of how many diamonds I have found. Here is that same diamond. I used my new digital microscope and that's what I'm getting. So I'm getting a lot better images doing it myself. So just a heads up, you might wanna invest in a digital microscope. That way you can print out your own diamonds and gemstones and have something a little bit better than that.